In Steel Path Cascade, you can reach level cap in about 1 hour and 40 minutes or even quicker in a full squad. You get lots of steel essence and a canes as reward which you can sell. The game sees them as mods, which means their drop chance is affected by mod drop chance boosters. As the mission progresses more Thrax will spawn. The setup I'm going to show you for this is build around three main tasks. The first one is staying alive. The second is killing Thrax Centurion and its ghost form fast. The third is killing Acolytes. I made the video in three sections. The build, some tips and gameplay. I use Syvra because her invisibility is active as long as you have energy. Rolling Guard, Infiltrate, Umbral Intensify, Prime Flow, Vigorous Swap, August Secrets, Narrow Minded, Transition Fortitude, Holster Amp, and Endurance Drift. More Torments, and Obtain Energize. The Arcan Shards are, two Crimson Shards with critical damage for melee, two Amber Shards with more energy from Energy Orbs, and one Amber Shard with Parkour Velocity. If you have an active ability and use Void Mode, you are not invincible. If you see your operator dies with health, that means that your frame took too much damage. Use Rolling Guard to remove all procs and get 3 seconds invincibility. The damage increase of Holster Amp and Vigorous Swap is multiplicative for Throne Blaves contact and heavy explosion damage. This is equal to 225% Eclipse. Power Strength is for Infiltrate, which lets you move faster if you are invisible, and for the Damage Increase ability. Zeta's Whisper gives extra void damage which does plus 50% damage to Overguard. It is possible to do level cap with it, however the status effect of void damage, Bullet Attractor, can cause problems. It works very good as long as you hit the head. If not, the bullets will be redirected to where the Void proc hits the target. I would recommend using something else, Eclipse for example. If you cast Invisibility, you will preserve the light condition from that location as long as you are invisible. This has been around for over two years. It seems like D is fine with it. As primary weapon I use Phage, with Sinister Reach, Hell's Chamber, Lock and Load, Shotgun Heavy, Hunter Track, Frail Momentum, Tainted Shell, Seeking Force, Silent Battery and Primary Merciless. Instead of Hunter Track, you can use Vigilante Ominence, or Vigilante Offense. For Rivens I would try to get stats like Status Duration, Status Chance, Multi Shot and Punch Through. As secondary weapon I use Letum, with fire rate, reload speed, headshot damage and plus damage on a non-crit or status hit for 10 seconds. The mod setup is Lethal Torrent, Frostbite, Deep Freeze, Pathogen Rounds, Prime Heated Charge, Prime Target Cracker, Prime Pistol Gambit, Galvanized Diffusion, Suppress, and Secondary Deadhead. Now to the Glaive setup. Sacrificial Pressure, Sacrificial Steel, Buzz Kill, Corrupted Charge, Veil Quick Return, Killing Blow, Gladiator Might, and Amalgam Organ Shatter. As focus I use an Iru, and its second ability Caustic Strike to strip armor, and an Iru Wisps for extra amp damage. As companion, I use Spance of Ulpophila. With Pack Leader, Enhanced Vitality, Metal Fiber, Primed Animal Instinct, and Fetch, which is very important to have. Viral Quills, Synth Deconstruct, Synth Fiber, Tech Assault, and Panzer Devolution. If Ulpophila dies, you have to recast Invisibility. Due to a bug, the larvae will not be invisible until you recast your ability. 
After 30 seconds you have to do that again when your Volpa finally vibes. Luckily that does not happen very often. The Volpa Filer is one of the best options because you will have fetch active all the time, and Volpa Filer will spread viral even in its larvae form. As operator I use an amp with Cantic Prism, in this case with Prepar Scaffold and a Certus Brace for extra crit chance, or 577. The arcanes on the amp are eternally redicate and eternal onslaught. Cantic Prism with Certus Brace is good because 1. It has one of the highest damage outputs. And 2. You can immediately re-enter void mode after the last shot of the burst is fired. The arcanes Emerge and Savior and Magus Lockdown are a very good choice, however you can replace Emerge and Savior with something like Emergence Renew It, Magus Repair, or Magus Cloud. To get some extra amp damage you can go to the Orcus Relay on Pluto between 10 and 20 minutes before night begins on Cetus. Idolin Hunters will give damage blessings at that time. which will give you 25% damage increase, amps included. Together with Eternally Redicate, you have then a 85% damage boost to your amp. Now some tips for the mission. To deal with Thrax Centurion fast, you first have to strip his armor with Anira's second ability. Then prop viral, which will still be applied on its ghost form and boost your amp damage. Shoot his head with your secondary. Then shoot its ghost form in the head with your amp. When they've reached level 3000, you can proc Eternal Onslaught to get the crit chance buff by spamming your second ability and spamming Void Dash. It will activate when your energy is 25 or lower. If Thrax Centurion's ghost starts to consume an enemy, they take more damage. If they don't consume an enemy and you get too close, they will try to keep distance and face away. You can also use Lockdown on its ghost form after it stops moving. You can kill Thrax level 650 or higher without the damage buff ability, Eclipse in this case. If you are close to lose because the threat level is too high, you don't have to kill the Thrax. Move on to the next Exalizer until you have most of them. This console can give red crits for your secondary weapon. It is a good buff, however you will not get the 1200% or 2000% damage increase on your litem as long as this buff is active. If you switch to Operator while your shield is down, you can die quickly because the enemies will attack you when you leave Void Mode to shoot. When you shoot your amp, and enemies attack you, do not transfer back to your frame. Use Lockdown and move a bit away before you switch. As long as the threat level is low, you can stay in a room with one Exalizer. But whenever you are unsure go to the room with most Exalizers, so you always have enough time to deal with Acolytes. If you are not sure if the Exalizers in other rooms are in the same area, check your map so you can plan ahead if things get heated. If you stand inside the bubble of an Exalizer sometimes enemies will stay outside of it. If that happens climb on something and kill them. 
Other enemies will now swarm you. Some tips for acolytes. If an acolyte spawns, move away from enemies, especially in higher levels. Some of them can cause a lot of trouble if not killed quickly. Mizra, for example, he can become invincible immediately and spawn his shadows. Or Malice with her magnetize ability. You have to get very close to hit her. I like to use the corridors between the main areas to deal with them. So the enemies will most likely come from one side, and you have enough space to avoid them if the acolyte is still alive. Usually I use the glaive to kill acolytes, but Misery is unlike the others, very weak against the Letum, which can easily shred him at very high levels. Almost done. I will now leave you with a few clips and some gameplay. Thank you for watching. Five, four, three, two, one.